Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to kick off our Flutter testing series here on this channel. This video is the kickoff of a series for Flutter testing. And for that, we want to talk today about why you should test in the first place, what are good reasons for it, give you some examples um, what other companies uh, had for problems there. And after that, we want to take a look into the testing pyramid and want to take a look how you can make testing possible in the first place. So I made some investigation in the whole topic and I found very interesting results that will um, surprise you. So stay with me till the end so you don't miss them out. Testing is a very critical topic in software engineering and our day-to-day -day job. Because think about it, let's assume you would work for a pacemaker company. A pacemaker, if you don't know what that is, is a small device that you get inserted in your body if your uh, heart has problems. According to Statista, and you will find all the links to the sources down in the video description below, over 1.15 million people on the earth has currently one inserted in their body to keep their heart running. So now assume we would have a 1% failure rate on these devices with software actually. So let's assume we would have 1% failure rate there. 1% would mean that 11,000 people would be affected by a defect software there. So you see it gets very quickly in a very critical position where even um, human lives are on stake. And if you think that would never happen because of software, well think again. In 2019 a company called Medtronic had to recall their stash of pacemakers exactly out of that reason. So there were a software failure, they had to recall it. And now think uh, again about how the people would feel that have to get rid of their pacemaker again. But of course this is a health problem and a life problem. But there are also other examples like for example monetizing problems. So assume you would work for a big company like Google, Facebook, Amazon and they will come into a downtime. And also there for example Google had in 2019 a 5 minutes outage. In this five minutes, Google lost a calculation from their revenue, 500,000 US dollars in five minutes. That is a crazy amount of money. Or let's think about Amazon. They had a 40 minutes outage, I think in 2013, which cost them round about 2.6 million dollars. These numbers are ridiculous big, right? But think about a small business now. If you are a small business and your app would not run for like five days, it could be really bad because this is maybe your only way to access money, right? And with that, we should now be very motivated to write tests for our application. As I already told you, the resources for everything are down in the video description below, so you can check them out. And now let's jump to our next topic, the testing pyramid. But before we start with the next topic, I think it's now the perfect timing to ask you for a like for this video. Also, if you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. And now, let's go further. Testing pyramid. The testing pyramid is a metaphor that created in 2006 by Jason Huggins. And Jason Huggins had the good idea that the everything that we do in programming or in testing could be represented as a pyramid. On the bottom, we have a lot of unit tests where very low on the bottom, it is pretty quick implemented and cheap. And the higher we go, the more expensive it will be. So the testing pyramid is a metaphor that is created by, as I said, Jason Higgins and reinvented and go brought further by Martin Fowler and also Mike Cohen. If you don't know these people, I will add some links down in the video description below. This illustration actually is perfect for us because this represents more or less what we want to cover in the next coming videos. We want to talk about unit tests. Unit tests is the foundation of the pyramid and we want to have as much as possible from them because they are easy to implement and cheap in general. They usually are used to test certain functions and methods and with that they are very common and best practice everywhere. The second layer is usually functional tests and functional tests are usually something where we 
call widget tests in Flutter, right? If you are coming from a web background, it could be also a component test. This is maybe more familiar with you. So this widgets, we can test that the input parameters lead to a different example, that the color is in a certain way, that we have a text title, such things can be tested in a functional test in that case. So that our widget behaves in a certain way if we put it different um, input parameters. And the next step are integration tests. And these are, according to the Flutter documentation, the biggest tests. So integration tests tests usually a very big part of your app or the full app. And this means like things like performance tests or scroll behavior tests. These three layers would be the ones that you find usually in the Flutter documentation. If you search for flutter.dev and go to the testing part, you will find these three. I would also like to add two more. The first one would be E2E tests, so end-to-end -end tests, which will be self-driven tests from the computer that are navigating, logging in, calling the REST API, testing all parts of the application. This goes very close to the integration tests, so don't worry about that. And the last tests, and I highly recommend you to do them too, are manual testing. So that means sit in front of your device, download it in your device or in any device that you want and test it manually. Because sometimes a computer can't recognize problems and additionally users and human beings have a very good potential to break apps. I don't know why, but application breakage is really common for the normal people. I think that was already a lot. We take a look why we have to test. We got a motivation why we should test, right? I hope at least. So that was very important for us. And additionally, we talked about the testing pyramid, how it is shaped and why it is necessary for us. I already created a playlist for this series and you will find the link up in the info box. So this is just the intro and we will go deeper and deeper in the testing frameworks to get you a feeling what is everything behind of the tests. I hope you enjoyed this episode of testing. Give this video a like, hit the subscribe button and thank you so much for watching today and see you the next time. See ya guys.